turn that on and we can crack jokes and I'll edit it out. Did, did those videos I sent to you turn out okay? Mm -hmm. It's because my son Michael helped me <laughs> put them on. Okay. Well, let's get cracking, shall we? As always, we put the sign of the cross in front of us. In front of us, and and for those of you uh, keeping score at home, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. We go to our heart first. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for life. We thank you for family and friends. We thank you, Lord, for the faith that you have written in our hearts. We thank, thank you that you draw us always to you. We ask that you bless our time together. We ask that you speak your message in spite of the messenger. We ask that you surround all of us with your heavenly angels. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Holy family, pray, pray, pray for us. us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And we'll ask um, the saint of the day to, to pray for us as soon as I ask this question. I have a really cool apologetics sheet that uh, references sacred scripture for someone who can tell me who the saint is for today, who's feast day. Not you, Father Daniel, for goodness sake. And not you, Rosie. Um, the saint of the day. David? St. Paul. St. Paul of the cross. Yes, we have a winner. Very good. I also have... I have something else for. Thank you. Yes, sir. And that is uh, that'll help you reference some of the teachings of the church uh, through sacred scripture. I also have a uh, a book by Mark Hart, the Bible guy, Mark Hart. For someone who could tell me who is starting in center field tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays in the World Kevin Series. Kevin Kiermeyer. Yes. Who? Kevin Kiermeyer. Kevin Kiermeyer. We have a winner. Yes. Bishop Lewis. Go ahead. Bishop Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Fort Wayne, Indiana, 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 Indiana. Indiana. How about that? You guys watch baseball, right? In the World Series, right? How'd you get in here? <laughs> Some... <laughs> Try not to follow stuff that's not Christian baseball. I'm just, oh. Okay. <laughs> baseball. It, it, it's in sacred scripture it, at the very beginning. It's in Genesis. It's in Genesis. It says, and in the big inning. Nice. Oh, thank you very much. What a fun. Okay, you, in front of you, you have a couple of smaller little pieces of paper. One of them is a, a variety of websites that you can reference as a great resource can have all that, Father. It starts with the Vatican, so we go big and then we go down to our own little parish and our own little prayer line. Um, all of these are terrific websites for you to, to reference. If you have questions, many people have probably thought of the same questions that you have, and you can find those answers in any number of places. Also, you have in front of you a great thought from the saint of the day thank you david for remembering that saint paul of the cross i thought this was terrific well um as we as we approach as we're going to get to uh toward advent which leads us to to our lord's coming at christmas great thought i thought i would share this with you and, and put this on your fridge maybe celebrate the feast of christmas every day even every moment in the interior temple of your spirit, remaining like a baby in the bosom of the Heavenly Father, where you will re be reborn each moment in the divine word, Jesus Christ. Isn't that a wonderful, tender thought? From our saint of the day, St. Paul of the Cross. Okay. The, the Bible. We, we hit the Old Testament last week. Father Daniel, I covered the Old Testament in an hour and ten minutes last week. Pretty impressive. I mean, it's a bit of a joke. Every book in our Bible, which is a book of books, a library, it is worthy of at least a semester in college uh, of, of dissecting all of, all of what is in, in these books. So, the fact that we're going to cover the New Testament tonight is a bit laughable. So, Bear with me. It, 
it's almost insurmountable. But we're going to cover it in an hour and 10 minutes, okay? Um, something to help you, uh, we homeschool our kids until they're sophomores, and then we send them to, uh, to Bishop Dwinger, but uh, so we homeschool them mostly for chores. You know, you get a lot more done. That way. <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> um, kids learning the books of the Bible. What are the three greatest qualities of every teacher? Repetition, repetition, repetition. 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 Thank you very much. And I say that enough and you guys will remember it, right? But on phone. Um, flashcards are a great way to remember this kind of thing. Uh, we are uh, growing up in, in the missionary church. We were missing seven books uh, in the Old Testament. And so I didn't know the list anymore. You know, we used to get a dime for reciting all the books of the Bible in, in, in Sunday school. Uh, I, I'd, I'd have loved it if, if anyway, they had, you know, the, the, they have yanked seven books out of the Old Testament while they're all here. So anyway, my point is, um, you can get on any uh, Catholic website and find all of the books of the Bible and make your own flashcards, which is what my wife did, loaned these to me um, as, a, as a show and tell. Okay. Take lots of notes if, if they, they seem uh, uh, relevant. But a couple of points I want to make about sacred scripture. And you can use the, the teaching, that you should have a teaching on there, uh, starting with, the, uh, starting with the, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We're talking about the, the New Testament. Four Gospels, life of Jesus, the birth to his ascension. Your, your goal is, is not to finish it. Okay? When you read scripture, your goal is to find someone, and that someone is Jesus. Amen? Your goal is to find Jesus when you read Scripture. Find our Lord. Scripture should be read on our knees. Scripture should be read prayerfully, asking the Lord to speak to you. Some of the books are interesting enough, they read, read like a novel, and you could just read through them. Uh, if you're going to read one of the Gospels, go to, go to the Gospel of Mark. It's the shortest. You'll, it'll be the fastest for you. But that's really not the, not the point, is to blast through it. I read the Bible from beginning to end. What did you learn? Not, not much. It took me a long time. It took me a year. Well, if you didn't learn anything, what's the point, right? We, we, need, to, we need to learn what God wants, wants to tell us. So your goal isn't to finish it. You know, it's like that, uh, it's like the good wine. It, 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 your goal isn't to just gulp it down. Your goal is to savor it, right? To, to savor that. Scripture should be read with diligence. If you seek God like you seek your next breath, that's how we should... That's how we should crave scripture, his word, okay? Now, you can't be a tourist in sacred scripture. You've got to be, you've got to be an inhabitant, so you need to know your way around it. So it shouldn't be uh, something dusty that sits on the shelf year after year after year. It should be something that's, that's active in your life, uh, more than just a co coffee table, table book, a, a handsome Leather-bound volume. Wow, that's handsome. Well, open it up. You know, they they, uh, they say that the Catholic Church is bigger on the inside than it is on the outside, and we find that when when we read sacred scripture. And we'll go through particularly a, a little bit of the Gospel of John tonight. Um, be happy to hear that, John. Um, and and we'll dive into a little bit of of how. How much bigger the book of John is, you know, kind of as we as we break it down. Okay. Well, let's just start with the Gospel of Matthew, can we? Matthew was a, a Jewish tax collector. 
and, and as you know, in that culture, uh, not um, the Jews weren't real fond of that because they usually uh, made themselves wealthy on the backs of the, the Jewish people. Uh, but once his conversion happened, once he followed Jesus and, and wrote the life of Jesus, uh, he, he, he was a great storyteller, and the, the transformation is, is, is pretty amazing. Um, let's go to, let's turn to, if you can, in your Bibles. Uh, let's see, we've got a Bible for you. Everybody have a Bible? Okay. It's a little different translation. Okay. Okay. See you, Father Daniel. Okay. Go to Psalms, turn right, find the New Testament. It begins with Matthew. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. It's going to be in the last third of your Bibles. I got the sponsors. We're going to go to, we're going to go to uh, chapter 5. Okay, Matthew chapter 5. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Matthew, chapter 5, verses 1 through 12. I think we're going we're gonna to read about the Sermon on the Mount. Matthew, chapter 5. Chapter 5, 1 through 12. Thank you. Matthew is describing for us who Jesus is. If you want to know who Jesus is, this is who he is. Matthew was a good Jew. Okay, to preface this a little bit. Matthew was a good Jew and was a believer in the law, in, in the law of Moses, okay, which was, was a, a typical of, a, of the good Jewish people, the Hebrew people, obeyed the law of Moses. Well, he writes it in such a way, and, and he considered Jesus to be the new Moses, okay, the new teacher, and, and that graded uh, some of the Jewish people. It, 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 it kind of went against what they, um, what they thought. So let's read that. The Sermon on the Mount, when he saw the crowds, he went up the mountain. Who does that sound like? Moses going up to get the Ten Commandments, right, in the Old Testament. After he had sat down, his, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And here comes the cross, okay? Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus they persecuted the prophets who were before you. So Matthew describes what it's like to be a Christian. To understand the persecutions of the world as simply steps toward heaven is what, what Matthew is trying to to get us to understand. Um, he, he is going, kind of going back by calling Jesus the new Moses and, and referring to him as 
the new teacher, as the teacher. Um, he, he's kind of going against the grain of a lot of the Jewish community. So let's go over to chapter 6, verses 1 through 5, and understand that, that during this time, there were Jews who were lovers of the law, lovers of the law, and didn't believe in Jesus, didn't believe in Jesus as the Messiah, okay? And then there were Jews who were considered Christians or followers of Christ who did believe. And, and it's a, a kind of a, a, a warring faction. Uh, they had all the power. These Jews had all the power. And they didn't believe at all in this new movement. They thought it was going to die away like, like all movements do. Um, they, they didn't think this was going to be any different. So you have a kind of a warring faction between the Jewish community. It's kind of a big deal. I mean, your lives are, are wrapped around your brothers and sisters in your, in your community. Okay, chapter 6. Matthew is kind of slamming on, on, on the ones who don't believe. Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. When you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. <clears throat> almsgiving is uh, uh, giving above and beyond your, your normal tithe, your normal 10%, giving of your, of your bounty to the poor, um, to the church, to someone in need. That's what almsgiving is. But he says, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues. Now, who's in the synagogues? Jews. The Jews, yes, who are, who are um, in the synagogues uh, worshiping just like they had um, for centuries, but without Jesus, without Christ. The teaching about prayer, he, he's going on, he's slamming on these on these Jews who don't believe, even though Jesus has performed many, many miracles. Verse 5, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. In praying, do not babble like the pagans who think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them. Your Father knows what you need before you ask him. And then Jesus teaches us how to pray. And this isn't, and Jesus had, had some tremendous authority, even though in the Jewish community he had no authority, but he spoke with authority. And he said, this is how you are to pray. We all know it. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not subject us to the final test, but deliver us from the evil one. Very important last part of that, verse 14. If you forgive others their transgressions, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive others, neither will your Father forgive your transgressions. Yikes, let's not forget that. Sometimes we, we, we kind of mumble through the... Uh, 
forgive us, please, Lord, for, uh, forgive our trespasses and those you know those who trespass against us. Sometimes we we don't necessarily are, are jumping for joy, wanting to forgive others. Okay, um, let's remember how many times we've turned away from our Lord, and and how many times we need to 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 forgive our neighbors. Okay. Okay. Matthew, the new Moses, the new teacher. It's actually great reading. If you can read, if you can sit down and read St. Matthew, the stories in, in St. Matthew are, are just fabulous. Uh, and it, it is, it's great reading. How many of you pick up a, uh, an encyclopedia and, and read your topic that you're looking for and then just keep reading? How many of you do that? No? You know, if you would learn to read, you would really like that. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was me. <clears throat> I just didn't know people still had encyclopedias. <laughs> well, not, not, not that we now that we have Google, we don't need an encyclopedia. Anyway, you can just keep reading and reading. It's the same with it's the same with Matthew. Uh, Matthew is a terrific storyteller, and and you'll enjoy that. Okay, the book of Mark. Mark was written first, okay? Mark was written around 60 AD, written around 60. There's still some per persecution, Ado Domini, still some persecution happening um, to Christians during the writing of Mark's, uh, Mark's gospel. Mark is a successor of apostles. Okay, he would be a, a bishop. He was not one of the original apostles, but he was a successor to the apostles. And he, he was an eyewitness to, to many of these things. Here's what, here's what St. Mark wants to get, get across to us. You're going to find Jesus. You're going to find your Savior on the cross. He doesn't spend a whole lot of time talking about miracles. He almost ignores the miracles. But but he who was was who had suffered and died as ransom for all of us. That's who he wants you to know. He wants you to know Christ on the cross. You'll know him by his cross. So if you read through the Gospel of Mark, and, and you can do that quickly, um, you'll find Jesus. You'll find your Savior on the cross. Last week we talked about the Old Testament still being relevant. We talked about um, the story of Moses and the the Hebrew people, and and they basically made a scribble design. It, you know, in the middle of this of the desert, they they wandered around for forty years, right? And, and as they're wandering, you know, they start complaining like all of us would. We're disgusted with this wretched food, right? And they complain, and um, they they complain against God, and punishment comes. We talked about that last week, and so God tells Moses, "Make a bronze serpent." Okay, these snakes are coming out of the desert, and they're biting and killing people. Make yourself a bronze serpent and put it up on a pole. Have the people look at it. What does that sound like? Well, they did that, and, and they were healed. And so, so we go to the New Testament, and, and we see that as we, as we look at Jesus, who has taken all of our sin, right, taken all of our sin on him, we look at him, we're moved, we're saved. Okay? It's, it's a, a, a correlation from the old, that Old Testament story. That's what Mark wants to wants to get across to us. Okay. The Gospel of Luke. St. Luke was a physician by trade. And 
And his emphasis, the Gospel of Luke, you know, we have uh, four different people looking at this and writing about it. We get a kind of different perspective, just as if we had, uh, you know, all of us tell a story of, of a certain thing, we would all have a different angle. St. Luke was paid great, a great deal of attention and knew the healing power of Jesus. So he focused on the healing of the afflicted. Now Luke was very well off. Luke was a physician. He was very affluent. Okay. Um, and, and his his audience was, was well off. Okay. Uh, and they were educated. So his, his diocese, as it were, the people he spoke to um, were these people. And, and we know how that works. We, we, uh, we have it somewhat in our culture with, with the affluenza. You know, it's not, uh, it's not the influenza that, that, that uh, killed all those people in, in the, you know, in the bubon through the bubonic plague. Uh, through rats, uh, affluenza, because we have so much, it's caused by the rat race, right? Trouble with a rat, even if you win, you're still, you know, uh, and you're still a rat. <clears throat> Trouble with the rat race. But I'm bums. I need a canned rim shot from you sometime. <laughs> then everybody will know it's funny, you know. <laughs> so we have a, have a little bit of this in our culture with because we have so much, we have so much, too much. And we think we don't need a savior, right? Well, Luke was talking to that kind of an audience. Let's read um, Matthew, Mark, Luke. Let me catch it here real quick, Luke 4. He spends a lot of time talking about healing. Yes. See how that came to me? Luke 4, let's go to verse 16. Luke 4, verse 16. It starts with, uh, he came up to Nazareth. You see that part? Did I find it? Luke 4, verse 16. He came to Nazareth where he had grown up and went according to his custom into the synagogue on the Sabbath day. He stood up to read and was handed a scroll of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the passage where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring glad tidings to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim a year acceptable to the Lord. That's Luke's emphasis in, in Luke's entire gospel is, is he is he is trying to, to explain to his very wealthy and very educated friends that the people who get Jesus, the people who get him, the people who know that Jesus will save him are the poor and the downtrodden, the afflicted. Oops, afflicted. The, the infirm, the, the crippled. Why can't you guys, why can't you guys get it? These guys get it. You know, the, 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 the people that sometimes, you know, are looked down upon. He's trying to he's trying to get it through to his his wealthy educated friends that uh, ironically as educated as they are they're not getting it they're not understanding that Jesus will save them how many of you understand that when we're sick when we're hurting when we're when we're poor the Lord has a captive audience amen, amen. <gasps> someone close to you dies someone close to you is sick all of a sudden, we're listening, right? Um, that, that's what Luke is trying to to convey to his, um, really, to his diocese, as it were. It's they who accept Jesus. 
Wow, right? So blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who are detached from stuff, right? We have a lot of stuff. We have closet space for stuff. We need storage room. You know, in 1960, we didn't need storage facilities in the United States, okay? Because we didn't have as much stuff. We have stuff today. But blessed are those who are detached from stuff, right? Would be a, a 2020 American translation of that, right? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are, are those who who see that God is more important than the stuff and the kind of the cars we drive, right? Anyway. Um, Luke chapter 2, we always read Luke chapter 2 as the, the gospel reading at Christmas, right? And again, Luke, being a physician, sees the need for care for us, right? And, and some of the, the, the very tender things of sacred scripture are in Luke chapter 2 when they're talking about baby Jesus. And we're talking about protecting baby Jesus and keeping him from harm. Um, there, there is, there's no accident there that that's emphasized. You know, in the, in the God breathes, I mean, the, the, the whole uh, paradox of the God of the universe comes down as a helpless little child. The, the God who spoke the world into existence with a word comes down to us helpless, wordless as a, a, a baby. And Luke uh, kind of emphasizes the, the need for care for a little baby. Isn't that beautiful? We, 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 we miss that, I think, sometimes. Okay. See, we're already, how far are we in here? Half an hour. Uh, refer, through the three Gospels, all the way through, right? It's a joke. Anyway, how are we doing here for time? Let's take a quick break, and we'll, we'll dive into the, the Gospel of John, if we could. Uh, there's coffee over there, and yes, it is caffeinated. Uh, and there's some fashion creamer in the back, so help yourself. Uh, Kathy brought water, bottles of water. Uh, bathrooms are around the corner, and if any time anybody needs to get up and, and go, just go. Uh, we're all adults here, most of us, right? Well, okay, I'm not, but... I was just saying, I don't know about you. Thank you. <laughs> On my, on my technology so, I had her coffee and I'll find her birthday. Nice meeting you, Sarah. Nice meeting you. Oh, nice meeting you as well.